So now we're going to cover if you would like to make your watch more accurate. Um, there is a regulating lever on most mechanical movements that will speed or slow down the movement. Um, that regulating lever um, is a tiny little gizmo on the back of the movement. I'll show it to you. I also want to show you a fantastic tool for timing your watch's accuracy. There is this product called toolwatch.io. They have an app. Um, so before you want to go to speed or slow your watch down, you want to get an idea of how accurate is it right now. Try to get some of the glare off of this. So there's the Tool Watch app. If you go to toolwatch.io, toolwatch.io on a web browser, you'll get a similar inf interface on the web browser. But let's go there. I think it's cool they came out with this app. You create a login. There's some of my watches. You can see that my other white build your own watch is running plus seven, eight seconds again a day. Some other watches in here. But we want to go down. to the add button to add a watch brand build your own watch model is the series one Caliber is an 8215. Oops. And I'm not going to bother with this other stuff. It's not, ne not needed. So we're going to add this watch. Once you've added the watch into Tool Watch, you can do a measure. So what's neat about them is, you know, network time isn't 100% perfect. Um, they synchronize with a Navy atomic clock, and they also adjust, I believe, in the background for various network discrepancies, you know, jitter, the difference uh, of time of packet arrival. I mean, there's a copious reasons why your network might not be exact with the atomic clock. So I believe they're making adjustments, which is really cool. I, I got to confirm that, but I got to believe um, that's what's happening. Because one thing I've noticed is if you're going to do a measure on one network, make your second measure on the same network. So I'll, I'll tell you what I mean by that. So basically all you're doing with tool watch is once you're getting ready for a measure you are waiting for the second hand to reach 12 o'clock and then you press this button and then 12 hours later you come back to tool watch or any time after and you wait for the second hand to hit 12 o'clock and you press the button again and there you have your measure so i'm going to start a measure on this watch We're going to wait till it hits 12 o'clock. It synchronizes you. You hit done. That's it. That's going to tell you to check back in 12 hours. So you wait 12 hours and um, especially if your watch is new, I'd wear another watch and just leave it in place. Um, and um, just to accommodate for any skip seconds or uh, you know movement, I mean you you could try another measure with it's on its side on other sides. You know there's a lot of things that uh, affect the the speed of your your movement from magnetism to temperature to 
the position that it's in. I mean, there, there's a ton of variables. So even, even when you get a measure uh, and you measure the same watch again, um, you might be a little bit different, but, but not by a ton. So toolwatch.io, toolwatch.io, I recommend these guys big time. Get the app. It's awesome. I love it. So let's assume we've already been through the process of tool watch and we know that this watch is running fast and you want to slow it down. So you're going to go ahead, get whatever type of band you have on off. Really easy if you have a NATO. You're going to get either your casing ball or um, your jacks or wrench. Get your case back off. Love the casing balls. You see how easy that was? I'll take my case back face it down, set it aside in a petri dish just so I don't get more dust on it while I'm doing this. Would use gloves for this. Okay. So here we have our balance. We have our balance wheel. You see that uh, hairspring oscillating in the background. You can even see the pallet fork going back and forth, the escapement wheel moving. Um, to speed up or slow down the watch, um, you are going to move the regulating lever, which is this guy right here. The hairspring stud, you are not touching at all. I'm going to go ahead and zoom on this even further so I can show you the difference. There we go. So here's our hairspring stud. You can see it has kind of this like triangular shape to it on the end. This little point sticking out. That you do not touch. Um, and if this is your first time doing it, I would take a picture right now of, of where these two are positioned. If you were to accidentally move your hairspring stud, you would want to move it back. But really, just don't touch it. And then you've got a positive and negative. So obviously faster, slower. Now, if you want to make it slower, you're moving the regulating lever either this way or this way. You want to think of a straight line across the regulating lever. So you can see right now the regulating lever is set to not plus or minus. It's set right to the middle. So you're kind of turning it in the opposite direction of what kind of makes sense because if you think of a line going across here that is where the regulating lever is pointing. So moving the regu regulating lever this way will point it towards the plus. Moving it this way towards the hairspring stud would make the watch run slower. Now being that I want to slow the movement down, I want to move the, hairspring, uh, the ha uh, regulating lever towards the hairspring stud. These are micro adjustments. I mean, moving it a little adjusts it a ton. The first time I did this, I moved it maybe halfway in between the center position and the minus. And I moved it that, that little and the watch was running really slow, um, maybe minus 30. So, I mean, and it, every, every movement's gonna be a little bit different. You could use your tweezers to do this. 
you could use a um, you could just use a toothpick which is another thing whatever you're using the worst thing you can do is touch the hairspring below touch the balance so uh, do this with extreme caution um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it I'm just gonna slow this guy down just a bit and I'm hopefully you can see as I'm doing it how little I'm moving it there that's all I'm moving it and what you're gonna do after you've moved it you're gonna case the watch and you're gonna test it uh, go to go back to toolwatch.io test it see where you're at if you're minus 10 and that's acceptable leave it there if you're minus 20 obviously you want to speed it back up again um, so I'm gonna leave it right there test you know this could be a couple day process to find it uh, find the sweet spot but if you uh, if you put some time into it you can um, you can get these things to be fairly accurate I mean um, you know under plus or minus 10 easily I think um, and that could change again over time so you might have to speed it speed it down or slow it down again um, at some point in the future so um, just as you've done before you're gonna wanna you know, maybe blow out the movement make sure there's no dust in there and I gotta tell you just a hair a, pe a, a hair in there would stop that balance from moving so um, keeping dust out of your case is important clean off my case back it's off screen I'm looking in the light for dust and fingerprints and whatever might be on it it's looking pretty good I've, I've done this on um, several watches many watches and um, it's great you know it's amazing I got a Hamilton um, khaki field khaki mechanical that was plus 30 straight from the factory which I thought was pretty pretty egregious for a Swiss watch but <sighs> never know what you're gonna get I'm gonna use my casing ball tighten the case it's on there pretty good now I adjust put on some silicone grease if you had been wearing this for a long time I might reapply silicone grease um, to the watch plus I don't plan on taping a dip with this guy anytime soon so not really worried about it too much and I you know like I said I just applied it but that's how you do that regulating lever don't touch the hairspring stud and then test you know and refine might take a couple tries but you'll eventually be able to get your watch running pretty darn accurate and if it goes out of accuracy you know how to fix it again and now that you've seen the process um, you know how to do it on another watch now keep in mind another watch the regulating lever and the hairspring stud may look different and if there's any question in your mind about it don't do it have a watchmaker do it but you know what I've found with um, Seiko's um, movements that I've seen Etta's um, most of them it's uh, pretty obvious what's the regulating bar and what's the hairspring stud so um, 
cool thing to do, adjusting the speed of your watch. Enjoy it. Have a nice day.